now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the mounting plan for the rotor actually. Now the downside, the downside to using the angle die grinder with the scotch bright wheel is that you can't really get underneath the studs in the center area. They do make tools that you can clean around the wheel studs. Those are a good thing to have, but we don't have one. So this is actually in pretty good shape. And it's time to talk about the liquids that we're gonna use on this job. So we have anti-seize and brake parts lubricant. Anything that should move, you do not use anti-seize on in a brake system, which seems kind of counterintuitive, but that's the way it is. So like our rotor is gonna sit around here and not move, we can use anti-seize on that. And we are, so if you've never used anti-seize before, this stuff gets everywhere. Once you use it, Go ahead and clean it up. And we'll do this one in just a minute, but we're gonna move on to the brake lubricant first. So the brake lubricant we're gonna use to lubricate the pin as it slides in and out of the caliper. This comes in different styles. I've personally never used this orange before today, but it should be fine. So we'll use a little bit of our brake caliper lubricant dress the pin up real nice in that, take a little bit of extra, put it down inside of there. Now if you put too much lubricant in it will actually cause the pin, and you can see it kind of doing that, it will cause the pin to bounce back out, you don't want that to happen. So we'll put a pretty good amount in, take this, add a little bit more. So that's nice and lubed up. Now that we've got that done, I did that before I put the rubber piece in because it should be a little bit easier to get the uh, grease down in there. Now we'll take our, our uh, boot that I have cleaned up, wipe the excess grease out of where it's supposed to go. our rubber boot. I'll take just a little bit more of this, put it inside the actual bellow part of the boot where it expands and contracts. Now as this pin goes through here, the rubber will probably wipe a lot of this grease back out. Drive it down in. And move that around. Obviously I can't put the other boot back in because we don't have one at this time. Again, Brake parts lubricant on that. It comes in green, orange, gray. I think I've seen red. Lots of different colors. Not anti-seize. Do not use anti-seize in this part. It will cause it to seize up and stop working. Don't use anti-seize in here. But since we've got the anti-seize out, let's go ahead and use it on its appropriate spots, which Mix this one up because it looks like it sat for a while. Boy, this is some runny anti-seize. Okay, ooh, that's a lot. A little bit more than I really intended, but we're gonna paint up around the hub, just around that center. This went out farther than what I really meant for it to go, and that's because this anti-seize is really runny and just kind of taken off all over the place. Now while I've got the anti-seize out, and since I'm already done with the pins, I will take some anti-seize. And I'm going to uh, dress up those spots that we cleaned with the file. Now you've probably got anti-seize on your hands. 
and you really want to go wash that off immediately or you are going to be finding anti-seize the rest of the day. So I'm going to go wash my hands, set that off to the side a little bit. After you get the anti-seize off of your hands, we're going to start the part that you actually have to be clean with. So I'm going to open up my new rotor. And oftentimes these will have some type of coating on them as well as an oil to try to keep them from rusting on their journey across the ocean from China to the United States where we eventually use them and are disappointed with their quality. But that's besides the point. What we need to do is get the oil residue off. And my hands were clean and now they're not. So I'll use a little bit of brake cleaner you can also use just dish soap and water in a sink, but for right now, I'm gonna use brake cleaner. I'm gonna spray this down, and you can see it kind of beating up on there. Take our clean blue rag, wipe it off. Do that a couple of times. What I usually do is I do just the back side first. Now, if you remember the bolts that we had, I try to line them up right like they were so that we get holes in the same spot. So I just look at my witness marks on the back side, take our rotor, slide it into place. I'm gonna take just this large nut. What I usually use here is an axle nut, but I don't have one. So I'll take my large nut and one lug nut and I will just snug this in place. And what that's going to do is that's going to keep our rotor tight for the rest of the work we're going to have to do. So I'll turn this wheel again so you can see what's going on. I think that should be a decent angle. Now I'll take my brake clean. I haven't touched the back side so I clean up the front. Get all that grease and oil. We don't want any grease or any oil or anti-seize or anything like that to get on the fresh stopping surface. So now we've got that nice and cleaned up. Set that off to the side. Carefully grab our caliper bracket, trying not to get into the anti-seize. Okay, so we got a bunch of new hardware with the pads. These seem to be pretty decent quality pieces, so we will use them, plus one of our other ones is kind of damaged. So we'll take them, try not to get anti-seize on our hands. That failed, I'm gonna have to wash my hands again. I made a real mess with the anti-seize. I'm gonna go wash that off one more time. All right, so these brake pads also come with a couple of extra clips you have to install. Now on this one, we see it's got a round mark, which means it was on the piston side, and it's got the clip kind of down this way. So as I grab my new pads, I'm going to install them the way that they were, which makes sense because this side is the side that will get most of the pressure while we're stopping. So we've got our clips on the opposite end. Now, as you can see, I've got these in plastic. I want to be really careful not to actually touch the stopping surface. Just the oils on your hands can kind of screw those up. So I'm going to very carefully lift the pad out. Not all of them will have clips, but you can see that one's now got a clip. Set it face up off to the side. Grab our other one. It's going to be like this. Take our clip for that one. Okay. So 
now we've got our two pads. We go ahead and do our best not to touch the anti-seize again. Got that one in there. I don't think I touched the pad surface. And I didn't get anti seize somehow, so that's good. Grab the other one. Same thing. So now our pads are set into the bracket. Get our bolt. Actually, get both of our bolts. Get our ratchet and our socket ready to go. I'm going to try to install this. And obviously, I don't have the second pin in. I don't have the second pin right now. Okay, so once we get our pads in, go ahead and slide this on. Snug them up with the ratchet. Now get on your service information, find your torque spec. Once you've got your torque spec looked up, work both your bolts. Okay, so those are now torqued and ready to go. What we can do at this point is I sometimes use a little bit of our caliper lubricant. Read the directions, make sure the stuff you've got says it's okay. But I'm gonna put a little bit of this on the backing plate where the caliper makes contact, which in this case is right about there. And where the caliper piston hits in the back. So go ahead. So now what we'll do is we'll take our caliper off of its hook. We already compressed the piston so that should be no issue. Slide it back into place. Put both of those together, torque those to spec, put your wheel on, torque it, and you're all set. I'm not going to finish this one completely right now because I can still do this, uh, this last piece without torquing this all down. And uh, I'll do that later, but I'm not going to finish it on video. So we'll go ahead, we'll torque these small bolts. They're usually pretty light. And finish putting our tire on and then this wheel is done so that is that is the way I usually do disc brakes and honestly this bracket stuff you can do that just about every year where I'm at if not every two years it's totally necessary and if you do that service your brakes last a lot longer granted we still have Chinese garbage metal in the rotors, so they're just gonna rust out. So does it really make that big a difference? Maybe not. 
remember always zero your torque wrenches. Uh, hit the subscribe, like, share. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.